Here we have two of Mako's new texture products. We have light magma and dark magma. These glazes produce a cratering effect. As with any stonework glaze, you're gonna to wanna to shake it before you use it. So we're gonna go ahead and shake it. And when you're applying this glaze, I recommend using one of our larger fan brushes because the heavier the glaze is applied, the more of a cratering effect that you're gonna have. So you wanna make sure you're getting that glaze on nice and heavy. I'm gonna load my whole fan brush with this glaze, let the excess drip off here, and then apply the glaze inside of my ramekin. You wanna make sure it's drying in between the coats. I'm going to let that dry just enough to lose its shine before I apply my second coat. And so as you can see here, the first coat of our dark magma has mostly lost its shine and we're gonna go ahead and apply the second coat on top of this. With the heaviness of these coats, they are going to take longer to dry, so you'll have to keep that in mind. Again, using our larger fan brush, fully loaded, and we're going to apply it on top of our semi-dry first coat. We have a nice even application, avoiding any drips. Keeping in mind, if you do have drips on any area, that's going to create a deeper cratering effect in that spot this guy to dry for our second coat to dry before we put our third coat on. So our second coat has semi-dried, so it's lost its shine, but it's not bone dry. As you can see on the outside here, this is bone dry. And we're gonna go ahead and apply our third coat. Getting that extra glaze off of our fully loaded fan brush. Now we have three good coats applied of our dark magma glaze here. And it won't come out like this. If you're using the light magma instead of the dark magma, you might want to apply an additional coat to get the same cratering effect as you would achieve from the dark magma. So there is some variation between the two magma glazes that we have here. As you can see here, there is a deeper crater effect in the dark magma than the light magma. These glazes were applied the same. So if you do wanna have a similar crater with the light magma as you do with the dark magma, we would recommend applying heavier or additional coats to have the same effect. If you look here, we have the magma applied on these little mushrooms that we have cast. Here is about one or two coats of the dark magma applied, but we have the additional glaze dabbed onto these areas. As you can see, there's a lot more texture and cratering that happens the thicker it is applied. Similarly, we have the white magma here. Um, again, maybe one or two coats applied on the base here with additional coats dabbed on, creating a deeper, greater effect on those areas. So some firing advice for the magma glazes. When you're firing the dark magma, we would recommend to place it on a shelf by itself or possibly put a kiln brick between the dark magma piece and the other pieces. Here we have a light magma ramekin that was fired close to the dark magma. And as you can see, there is some fuming that occurred. So either keep all the dark magma pieces together in a kiln or have some sort of barrier between the dark magma and any other colored glazes. Our textured magma glazes are versatile products that can be used with a variety of clay bodies and firing temperatures, similar to our mud crack texture glazes. All of these have three coats. Here we have our magma glazes used together on this slip cast mushroom. This was a white slip cast body fired to cone six. As you can see here, there is the variance between the cratering effect with the two different magma glazes. The dark magma has a lot deeper craters, whereas the light magma is kind of more of a softer effect. And this is applied pretty thin. There's barely any cratering with the white magma and you can almost even see the clay body underneath it. It just stains it a little bit brown. This was applied with very light coats with both magma glazes. 
Here we have both of the magma glazes applied with a slip trailer. Just one coat with a slip trailer zigzagged on between these coats of the sandstone here. Again, as you can see, the black magma has a deeper cratering than the light magma. Here we have our dark magma applied in a band above a glaze combo. Here we have both of our magma glazes applied with three coats on top of our iron wash, and this is fired to come six. The iron wash comes through the magma glaze being applied on top of it and stains the surface a little bit. As you can see, there's a nice reddish brown color coming through the white magma and the dark magma gets a little bit of a sheen to it and has some more brown hues to it as well. Here we have our dark magma glaze marbled with our green gloss glaze. To marble the glaze, you would just pour stripes of glaze into the ramekin and then swirl together to incorporate the two of them, making sure not to mix the green glaze in too much with a magma or you will lose the cratering effect. So if you're applying it in combination with other glazes, it'll smooth out the glaze. Here we have our speckled stroking coat in combination with our light magma glaze. On this side, we have the light magma applied on top of speckled stroking coat. And on this side, we have the light magma applied underneath the speckled stroking coat. As you can see, when it's used in combination, you lose a lot of the texture effect and the gloss from the combo glaze comes through. This tile was fired to cone six.